right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And of course, I got I got a vlog for you. It's Thursday. That's what we do here on the Grim Green YouTube is we vlog on Thursdays. Gonna cover a lot of stuff. I got some cool first impressions to do. There is some advocacy stuff. Of course, we'll have beer shout outs retro vaping i do have a retro vaping segment prepared in fact while i was trying to find my little device that i wanted to use for retro vaping i'm not sure if you can see up here in this corner ready right here there is a, a bookshelf um there's juice all in here and down here and then this row is mods and then this row is mods and i uh, apologize let me turn down my uh, facebook notifications i grabbed what i needed and my old MVP version one <laughs> fell over and it was like domino effect. Just everything on that top shelf fell over. So I spent like, uh, you know, whatever, five minutes trying to pull everything off of the shelf and re-stack it all up. Um, it was annoying. It was annoying. So I'm hoping that this retro vaping segment is worth it, but welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me again here on the vlog. Like I said, we do have a lot of stuff to talk about. Let me get out my vlog notes. Uh, a couple updates from last week. Uh, I want to thank everyone for help uh, with the scrape. Um, apparently, I was doing it wrong, which which does happen from time to time. Um, a lot of people in the comments. Additionally, the Scrape group on Facebook uh, has been a big help. I've been reading through that stuff. I'm using the M deck now, which evidently I called the W deck, which evidently isn't a thing. Um, the M deck is designed for cotton. So what I did is I put one, two, three, four, five. We're going to talk about this in the first impressions. So what I did is I put a... Uh, 26 gauge anarchist wire it came out to one ohm exactly in there use the m deck with cotton uh filled it up it's been great now if anybody knows a better way to fill this please let me know i've been having uh i've been having problems filling it the vape on it is great the flavor is fantastic the draw is a little stiff but I actually, I, I've been, lately it's weird, I've been leaning towards more of a stiffer draw on things. But when you go to fill this, I pull out the deck and there's that little ring of, of like air, right, that you can, you can fill it up. And every time I fill it up, the juice just stays there. It doesn't drain down into the tank, it just stays there. And then I have to take my tweezers and like, poke air holes into the juice so that it like so the air can can correct itself and the juice can go down into the tank uh it's a little bit annoying um i don't honestly think there's a different way to fill it i'm just gonna have to sort of come up with a, a method and a technique but yeah, thank you everyone for help help with the scrape uh it's been uh it's been rocking and rolling and i got a lot of good uh got a lot of good feedback uh, information stuff like this um, I do want to do a quick update um, on this device so I've had this for a while now uh, I know twisted messes put up not a review video but he put up a video on Facebook about it I'm not sure I haven't seen a full review on this um, it's the DTM box mod and it's the one with you know the giant uh, the giant screen on the front with the up and down buttons on the front and it did that weird like pulsy thing. Um, I haven't been able to get this work to work for uh, at least uh, well over a month now. My up and down buttons are just stuck. They don't button anymore. They forgot how to button. They just are in and I can't press them or pull them out or anything. I can't do anything with this. Um, I can't turn it on. I can't charge the battery. I can't do anything. It's just a block of stupidness now. I've emailed the company uh, a couple of times, at least four or five times, with no response back. So as it stands, I don't care. There won't be a review for this. If you send me a product and it doesn't work and then I try to reach out to you to either get a replacement or get it fixed or try to figure out what's going on and I get no replies, then that's it. I'm sorry, that's done. I don't have any time for this. It's a useless brick of nothingness now that's gonna get set over there. Yeah, uh, so that's that's that. That's that update I wanted to do. So before we get to beer, I wanted to do 
a couple quick little advocacy things. Um, Stefan, 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 Stefan. So Stefan posted this article on uh, on Reddit. Let me try to find. Where is it? Yes, uh, Sonoma County, up there in Northern California, home of Russian River Brewing. Um, they are effectively banning flavors. The whole county is flavor free. It's going to be uh, it's going to be rolled out uh, effective September first this year, two thousand fifteen, in Sonoma County. You will not be able to buy flavored e liquid from brick and mortar stores. That's the law. It's passed. They did it. It happened. Additionally, existing tobacco retailers uh, need to get a permit and pay um, in order to stay uh, in order to stay in business. And this is a very very long article, and I'm going to post a link to it in the description. But this is happening in Sonoma County, Northern California, Northern California. It happened. It's di- it was voted on. Um, they say that it might come up again, but that nobody on the committee is likely to change their stance on anything. And of course, this is done under the guise of helping the children. We need to protect the children and the youth from all these delicious flavors that might get them hooked on cigarettes, right? Because everybody knows that when you have a nice, you know, a bakery cake flavor or a uh, or a coconut flavor, then yeah, that's the next logical step is uh, disgusting cigarettes. Everybody knows that, right? Um, it's a very, very long. Uh, it's a very, very long article, but uh, I know that Stefan uh, was up there uh, speaking and fighting against this, and unfortunately, we weren't able. Uh, he wasn't, and whoever went up there was not able to change the council's uh, outlook on on flavored e-liquids. So there you go. If there's any uh, brick and mortar shops up there in uh, in Sonoma County in uh, Northern California, then you're effectively I mean you can sell mods and stuff I guess but you're effectively you can't sell e-liquid with flavors in it no flavored e-liquid and they don't even say anything and I've looked through this article and they don't even say anything about like tobacco flavored liquids right they don't even say anything about menthol or tobacco they just say no no flavors uh, the health council in Sonoma County has effectively uh, killed vaping for most of Northern California, unfortunately. And this is a thing that happened, and people fought against it. And you know what? You can't change uh, you can't change people's minds if they're not uh, if they're not willing to listen. Unfortunately, thank you, Stefan, for posting that uh, over there on Reddit. Additionally, uh, Casa does have an insanely important call to action. We are supporting the bill we are supporting a bill which is weird um the plumes talked about this a lot of people have talked about this we're supporting bill hr 2058 which would change the grandfather date for vapor products to 2015. this is good this is this is a really really good thing and it's so easy to do uh so representative tom cole of oklahoma will save the U.S. vapor industry from being decimated by improper regulations by the FDA. This bill would amend the Food and Drug and Cosmetics Act to change the grandfather date for deemed tobacco products. This change would allow for all vapor products currently on the market to remain on the market without being subject to burden a burdensome slash prohibitive pre-market FDA approval and application process. Everybody stop what you're doing right now the vlog can wait click on the link below go to the casa call to action support hr 2058 this is uh unbelievably crucial unbelievably crucial unbelievably crucial if i will be insanely disappointed if all of you don't go and send an email to support hr 2058 and support tom cole of oklahoma um, we we have to get this grandfather date changed, and this is just one step. This is just one step. This allows vapor products to stay on the market, and then we start fighting at a local and state government like we tried to do in, in Sonoma County in Northern California where they just ban flavors. But please, for the love of God, please go do it right. Just pause the vlog. I'll wait. I'll wait right here. I'll wait. Go. Go. I'm not doing anything else until everyone goes over to the CASA website. 
That's just that's just how it's gonna be. I'm gonna do nothing. I'm gonna sit here and practice my O's. Shit! I'm gonna sit here and practice my O's while you guys go do that. I'm not even joking around. I'm giving you plenty of time. You don't even have to pause the vlog. You can just leave it playing. I'm gonna sit here and practice my O's. Did everybody go do it? God damn it, just go do it. It's so easy, it's so easy, you have to do it. Uh, but yes, thank you. Thank you for Kasav for getting that out there and thank you, uh, thank you, the viewer, for uh, for taking part in that. So, uh, that's what we have first. Um, before we do shout outs, let's do beer. Um, and the beer is kind of included in the shout outs. Um, this beer comes to me uh, via my good buddy Warmouse. Now, Warmouse has been sending me beer for, I mean, well over a year, possibly a year and a half, almost two years now. He's been sending me beer. He, he brews his own beer that he sends me. He gets rare beers that he sends me, and uh, I owe him, I owe him a lot. I owe him a huge shout out. I owe him, I mean, I owe him mods and juice, and I, I feel like I need to, to pay, pay this man back. Um, but he has created. From his Warmouse Tactical Brewing Company, a beer called What's in the Beer, Robin. Uh, this is fantastic, and it's got his Warmouse logo on it. You're not going to find this anywhere. It's his home brew. This is the official, unofficial, official beer of the Grim Army. A clever departure from the usual attitude of cramming more hops in to make an IPA, this white IPA uses fresh Michigan hops in just the right amount to make a great ale. Make sure you drink. Make sure you hashtag drink through the head like a man. Ignore your hashtag beer. Not the last shout out, but I have a shout out from Mike uh, on Facebook, and this is going to be one of those. Uh, this is going to be one of those GoFundMe sort of deals. Mike messaged me on Facebook, and he says, "Hey Nick, this past week we had a guy that hung out at our local shop here at Vapor in Easley, South Carolina, pass away in a car accident." Uh, he was an awesome, nice, helpful guy. His name is Johnny. Uh, he would have been, uh, and we have been posting vids uh, with the hashtag clouds for Johnny. It would be awesome if in your next vlog maybe you could blow some clouds for Johnny. I'm not sure if you could share this, uh, but there is a GoFundMe raising money to help uh, his family uh, with the costs. Um, it's sad. I mean, God damn it, it's heartbreaking. Um, absolutely, Johnny. You know what? I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab this. Here's some hashtag clouds for Johnny. Um, consider yourself shouted out. I'll post a link in the description. Uh, if you're feeling motivated or moved in any way to, uh, to help Johnny and his family out, um, I'll post a link in the description for his GoFundMe. Um, you know, and I... It breaks my heart every time because there's a lot of, uh, I get a lot of emails that are very, very heart wrenching with, you know, people who, uh, who own or run vape shops or were regulars in vape shops and they, they fall ill or they, they pass away and they're in a car accident or they're, you know, their child is sick and we live in this horrible, godless world full of pain and it's up to us to kind of take care of each other. And I do believe that. And, uh, you know what? If you feel like it, go click on the GoFundMe. Give Johnny a couple bucks. Give him and his family a couple bucks. Um, I do have another shout out that I wanted to do uh, from Eric. And this one's a little bit more lighthearted. Um, it's kind of a long email, so I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. Hey, Nick, I'm Eric. Uh, I work at a vape shop in Red Banks, New Jersey, VV Vapes. Uh, I noticed you comment on one of our employees' pictures on Instagram. It was a crazy 26 gauge, 55 gauge, which. <laughs> that shit's difficult. Clapton coil. Uh, Mike has been making coils nonstop uh, for at least a month or two. He's probably one of the most skilled builders I've ever seen. I was hoping you could give a shout out to Vinny, the owner of VV Vapes. He's the first person to give Mike a sponsorship, and he spent thousands on different wires for him. And he's a really big reason why so many people are vaping in this area, which is uh, Red Bank, New Jersey including myself. His shop is very, very laid back and everyone knows their shit. 
I work all week as a union electrician, but I come here on the weekends to work just because I enjoy spending time in the shop. The guy was one of the first people to start selling vape beer five years ago in Jersey, and he now has three successful stores in New Jersey and Florida. I know you get a shitload of requests, but we watch your vlogs religiously, and for a guy who doesn't take any compliments or credit where he deserves it, I think a shout out from you would mean a lot. Absolutely. VV Vapes over there in Red Bank, New Jersey, and in Florida. Vinny, consider yourself absolutely shouted out. It sounds like Eric really, really enjoys his job there. And it's funny because I work uh, I work from home now. I do all my I do all my uh, you know Namber Juice, Epiclouds, Grim Cult, Grim Green uh, from home now, and uh, I kind of have to force myself to get out of the house every once in a while, whether it be for lunch or to leave and go have dinner with people or to leave and go hang out and have drinks with people. Um, and I actually tossed around the idea of getting a weekend job or a part-time job uh, at a vape shop just to have that experience. Um, I've done, you know, I'm not certainly not trying to toot my own horn here, but I've done a lot in the vaping world. I've been doing videos on YouTube for six years. I've traveled all across the country going to vape meets and store openings and national vape meets and trade shows. We run a liquid company. Uh, I've seen so many sides of this business, but I've yet to experience that sort of like retail side of the experience. And I, uh, I kind of feel like that's something that uh, I would like uh, in my life. So. So it's obviously an option. I definitely understand, Eric, the idea of working at a vape shop on the weekends just because it's fun, just because you like the shop, just because you like the people. And it sounds like your boss, uh, Vinny, the owner, is a very, very, uh, very, good, very, very good guy. So shout out to you over there at VV Vapes. Do I have time for one more shout out? I don't. I don't. You know what? This is running long already. Don't have time for any more shout outs. Um, but yeah, so we've covered a lot already. We talked about beer, the unofficial, official, unofficial, official beer of the Grim Army. I do have a very large activism-related giveaway uh, this week. This giveaway is insanity. It is crazy. So uh, stay tuned. That's going to be toward, more towards the end of the video. But we did talk about beer. We did some shout-outs. We did some activism. Right now, what I want to do is first impressions. All right, so the first impression that I want to do this week is on this little fancy number. This just came in. This is the EVIC VT. So traditionally, the EVIC from uh, Joy Tech has been a tube mod. They did the EVIC, which I did a review of, and I wasn't really a fan of it. And then I got an EVIC Supreme, and it was so fucking ridiculous. Uh, I hated it. I hated using it. Uh, shout out to uh, Vapor S. Thompson for sending that my way, but I absolutely, I hated it. Uh, I did a first impressions in a vlog video, and it never got a full review because I got so frustrated with it that I hated it. And that's when I stopped liking tube mods. Thankfully, thankfully, Joytech decided to make the Evic VT a box. So this is a, can you see the screen on there? So this is a temperature control device now, and it's got this little toggle on top. It flips right, it flips left, and as I'm doing that, I'm adjusting my uh, my temperature up and down. There is a way to lock that, so if you accidentally flip it back and forth, like in your pocket, or if you're just holding it and you like flipping it back and forth, you can lock it so it doesn't actually adjust anything. Um, you hold the fire button and you hold this to the right, and you get a little thing that says key lock can't see that and then uh, so when you got when you try to uh, flip this it just says key lock and uh, it doesn't actually adjust anything so it supports temperature control of not just uh, and I uh, you know nickel wires and I whatever 200 wire nickel wire it also supports pure titanium wire and I've never experienced pure titanium wire before I got this they sent me some coil heads that go in their new Ego One Mega Atomizer, and it's nice and matchy-matchy. Look at that. Look how matchy-matchy that is. This is a bright orange color. Sorry, Sheik. This is a bright orange color. It's got a black racing stripe. It also comes in white with a blue stripe and black with a red stripe. Now, I kind of would have... I love the orange. The orange looks effing cool. I would have kind of preferred the black with the red because then I can use other stuff on top of this, and it might look a little bit cooler. As it stands, I, I'm i kind of forcing myself to use this Ego One Atomizer 
because it matches the mod. Now, if I had a drip tip that was this same color, I could rock anything on there and then pop on the drip tip of this same color and then it would kind of be a matchy-matchy deal like that. But as it stands, it's fine. So I have, I have a titanium wire in here. One, two, three, let me go to the menu. Yeah, so this is the, I have a titanium wire in here right now. And I tried the nickel coil head, wasn't enjoying the way that it was vaping. I've tried the titanium coil head and I'm getting a bit of a better vape. The problem is with these coil heads, and I'm gonna be that guy real fast. Let me get these out. I should have had these out anyway. So here's the nickel coil head, and if you look at this thing, um, let me attempt to uh, zoom it in. If you look at this thing, it's got tiny, little juice flow holes. Two tiny little, ah! Two <laughs> tiny little juice flow holes. So this is nickel, it's coming out to 0.2 ohms. It's got a nice big airflow gap right there in the bottom, it screws in and connects to your 510, a nice big airflow. There's your coils on the inside. There's that mesh on there. I don't know what these coil heads are made of. Uh, I'll have to look on the website. But I just wanted to show you the two tiny little juice flow holes in there. So the temperature control works with the nickel really, really well. Because I've noticed that I don't get burnt flavors. I just get a really weak vape. And the reason I believe that I'm getting a really weak vape is because the juice isn't feeding enough, feeding fast enough to the coil heads. If these were Canthal coil heads, I would have just burnt up like three in a row. But because they're nickel and it has the temperature sensor on there, it will, you know, whatever, feel that there's no juice and lower your wattage to prevent it from burning. Titanium is supposed to work the same way. So I have the temperature on this titanium coil set to 500 degrees. The power, uh, my wattage is 42.5 watts. My atomizer is 0 0.42 ohms. Vape. If that was a Canthal build, that would have been a dry hit right there. I could feel the flavor go from uh to in about 0.2 seconds. It feels weird and it tastes awkward. The, 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 nickel, the two nickel heads that I've used already, and I've only had this a day, the two nickel heads I've used already both had a very metallic flavor to them, which I was not enjoying. So what I end up doing is I close off the airflow on the bottom. I suck some juice in there, open the airflow back up, and I know, I know that this one, I know that this toot will be great. Nice and saturated, nice and flavorful. It doesn't feed the juice fast enough into those coil heads and it drives me nuts. Now I know that there is an Ego Mega One RBA base somewhere. Someone posted it on from Fast Tech, it exists somewhere. So if I could get in there and build my own little single coil head in there and wick it with my own cotton, either using titanium or nickel, I think this would work much much better you know what you know what you know what let's try this so this is a nickel coil head as well have i shown you guys this pipe this is a new freight train pipe it's got a dna 40 on the inside it's the new freight train pipe i'm gonna have a review for this very very soon but i also got these smoke tech uh temperature sensing coils and they work uh they work really great uh, this is 0.15. I have it set to 470 degrees at 40 watts. That works great. So what I'm going to do is try to replicate those settings for this tank. God, what juice is that? I don't know what juice that is. So what I'm gonna do is try to replicate those settings, shit, with this tank 
on this device and see what I mean how it's orange and it doesn't really match the tank anymore and I wish I had an orange drip tip to put on there it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's just an aesthetic thing so one two three I'm gonna change this from titanium to nickel okay so nickel yes Okay, so 42.5 watts, 500 degrees, nickel coil, 0.16. If it vapes the same as the DNA 40, I'll be sold. It vapes very similar to the DNA 40. I think this is a good board in here. I'm interested to put this through its paces. You know what? It's not sensing the nickel coils. So on this Evic VT, if you put anything on here that's not nickel, if you just put Canthal on here, it automatically switches it to just straight up variable wattage mode. It's not sensing that this is nickel on here. <laughs> nope, it won't change it to nickel. This is a nickel coil in this tank. I know 100% for sure it is because I was just using it on a DNA 40, but for some reason my Evic VT will not sense that it's nickel. That is fucked up. That is super fucked up. Why won't it sense that it's nickel? DNA 40 says new coil 40 watts, 1.6 ohms, 470 degrees. And I know I see the temperature thing kick in. Yes, I definitely feel the temperature thing. I can see it on the display. The temperature kicks in. The temperature mode kicks in. Why, Evic? Why won't you see that this is a nickel coil in here? One, two, three. Okay, let's try it one more time. Let's try it as titanium. I don't think it's titanium. Ooh, what if these are titanium wires in here? <gasps> Mind blown. These might be titanium wires because now it's actually reading it as a as a temperature control. A titanium wire because that's a damn good vape right there. A damn hell ass good vape. So, yeah, that's the Evic VT. Obviously, it's a little complicated. I need to spend a lot more time with it. Uh, I got some titanium coils, I got some nickel coils. They even sent me some Delta 2 titanium coils as well. So that I can rock, uh, maybe I'll have to bust out my Delta II and uh, yeah, throw this on there, throw this titanium on there. So can the DNA 40 read titanium coils as well? Obviously, duh, yeah, it can, because I was rocking this Smoke Tech coils on here, which I believed to be nickel, but are in fact titanium because the EVIC reads them as titanium. I'm gonna look on the Smoke Tech site and get that all sorted out. But yeah, obviously this is the testing phase and I'll report back later with how things uh, work in the real world. But so far, so far I really like the feel of this. I really like the fit and finish. I thought this was a sticker, but it's not. It's, it's paint. It's painted on there. The whole base is painted. It feels very, very nice, very, very substantial. 60 watts maximum output, 5,000 ma or milliamp hour battery. It's got this cool little toggle on top, and it's got the, uh, it's got the button, which, uh, which I actually really, really like. Uh, so far, I really like everything about it. If I can get my head around this whole titanium nickel temperature sensing thing. not a bad vape it's just a weird vape right now but uh, but yeah pipe as well I think my batteries are uh, beyond dead in that anyway so moving forward I do have another first impression for you let me set this stuff aside um, I got this this is another temperature sensing thing this is the uh, snow wolf 200 watt look at that you can see me talking talking you can see my uh, reflection. You can see me talking right there. This is the Snow Wolf 250 watt. Um, looks a lot like the variant, doesn't it? And the display is on that side. I have it set right now. Uh, it's not in temperature mode because this is a Canthal build on here. Uh, 25 watts at one ohm. It's a it's a fantastic vape here with the Squape. So 
So you can hold down the up down buttons and switch it back and forth from changing your temperature. Can you see this? Changing my temperature there, changing my temperature there. And then you go, okay, I want it, uh, whatever, 400 degrees. And then uh, when you hold the buttons again, it switches it back to changing the wattage mode. 26 watts on a one ohm coil. It's very, very nice. It's very, very heavy. It's a very substantial feeling mod. It came and it was all nice and shiny and reflective. And now you can see it's there's goo on it. There's It's just smeary and fingerprinty. Basically is a lot like the Segeli. The back just pops off with magnets and your batteries go in there. I happen to have some purple e-fests in there. Back snaps back on. Look at all those fingerprints. Let me try to have to polish this up for the pictures when I take for the thumbnails. See, it's nice and shiny and then just fingerprints for days on there. It's cool. Uh, I don't know the asking price on this. This came to me via Asmodis. Uh, let's go to their website right now. So this is the Snowwolf 200 variable watt box mod with temperature control. It's in stock, 150 bucks. 150 bucks? Shit, that's good. I mean, that's a good deal to me for a 200 watt temperature control box that looks, this is a nice looking device. It's a nice feeling device. Nothing about this feels janky so far. It feels very nice, very substantial. It's actually really comfortable to hold. The only downside of this, see if I can turn it off. Five clicks and it turns off. One click, you get this logo, it says Snow Wolf, and you're ready to go, but then it's locked one two three four five so when you lock it one two three four five it turns itself off and you have to turn it on wait for the little boot up thing snow wolf then you get your display but it's locked one two three four five this has a thing kind of like the I guess the DNA's never really did this it auto locks itself after so much time it auto locks itself and then after so much time it turns itself off so if you are vaping and you're watching a movie and you set it down for like 20 minutes, a half an hour, and you pick it up, it'll be off. So you'll turn it on, you wait for it to boot up, then you'll unlock it, then you can vape it. That's the only wonky thing I've noticed so far. But yeah, as modus, as modus distribution, uh, yeah, they got the fat snow wolf. 150 bucks. It does have a spring-loaded 510, but I want to verify that real fast. It does actually have a spring-loaded 510. I think I tested this already. Yes, a very spring-loaded 510. I've uh, been rocking it with the Squape. been rocking it with the Matrix tank as well. Let me put this on here. And it's going to uh, ask you if it's a new atomizer. You say, yes, that's a new atomizer. Uh, this one is 0.22 ohms, so I'm going to have to adjust the wattage up. What do we do? What do we put a 0.22 ohm coil at? Nope. We're going to have to go much higher than that. Let's crank it up to like 134 watts. Okay, slow down here. <coughs> so when you get up <coughs> to those <coughs> higher wattages, uh, it does this like pulsing thing. When you get above 150 watts, it'll give you the full wattage, but it pulses it. Let me see if I can get this on camera. You hear that? So it's really, uh, it's giving you the wattage, but it's also pulsing it. Like it, you can physically, you can literally hear it pulsing like that. That's a little more reasonable. Let's take this down to 72 watts. This is one of the things I love doing is just adjusting to taste. 64 watts. That's where I'll leave that. So yeah, fat, uh, the fat Snow Wolf, the 200 watt Snow Wolf, 149 bucks from Asmodis. Um, 
I did have other first impressions. Oh yeah, I wanted to talk about these my boxes I got. So my vapes, my vapes on Facebook makes one of, I mean, what I feel are some of the best unregulated box mods around. I did a review a while ago for this one. This is the 18650. If you remember, it's made out of Plexi, dual 18650 battery. It's fantastic. I have never retired this box mod. I just love it so much. <coughs> Pardon me. Cheek. Stuart, anything to say? Those are great unregulated box mods for like low ohm builds. They make a 26650. Look at the size of this thing. Douche. Dual 26650s in there. That is insane. Um, it's insane. It's exactly, exactly like the other My Box, except it's a dual 26650. It's got, you know, a MOSFET for the switch. It's unregulated. It's got springs in the bottom. Um, the door, look at that door. It just fits on there so nice, so well. There's a little divot here to pull your door open. This is number uh, 35. It's cool. These are cool. Spring-loaded 510s, great switches. I've been rocking it with the Twisted Messes build and some Grim Cult juice, and it's been, ah, oh, it's just been fantastic. It's just been great. I feel like these are uh, great, great, great box mods. Um, I think they sell for a hundred and forty dollars, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. They also did send the little eighteen three fifty version, but I don't know where it is. It could be, uh, it could be in the kitchen for all I know. Actually, it's, I think it's in the bathroom actually, which is unfortunate. Um, oh, they make a triple eighteen six fifty. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's boss. Anyway, uh, I'm going to link you in the description to the My Vapes uh, Facebook. I don't think they have a website. They need to get a website. Ask for My Vapes website. My Vapes, start a website. <laughs> don't run your business on Facebook. Start a website so people can order your boxes because I freaking love these boxes. It's a box. It's an unregulated box along with like uh, the Castigador, the Titan, uh, I just recommend unregulated box mods to people who are looking for unregulated box mods, but the My Vapes one comes up very, very, very frequently, very, very often, and I think it's uh, I think they're fantastic boxes. So yeah, I think that's gonna wrap up the first impressions. We got the Evic uh, VT, we got the Snow Wolf 200 watt, and we got some My Boxes that I may do a video on later. I also want to give a quick shout out to the Cloud Kicker Society. So they released their own juice line, and um, I love juice. I'm a huge fan of juice. I, I when I went to all these vape meets recently, uh, the SoCal Vape Expo, Vapor Slam, Vape Bash, uh, VPX, Vape Summit, I came home with easily over 80 bottles of juice. I mean, it is silly. And I'm looking forward to trying all these bottles of juice, but it's so much juice. I have a mountain of juice. In addition, my mainstay vapes are, you know, obviously my own flavors. I love the Grim Cult stuff. I love the Epicloud stuff. Those are like my main vapes. And then I get to try all these other flavors. But I do want to give a shout out real quick to Cloud Kicker Society. Uh, they released their own juice line. The first one I opened, I'm not even gonna mention it, wasn't a big fan. But, somehow Cloud Kicker Society has managed to make a good melon flavor. <laughs> They've made a good melon flavor. Now, for me, melon flavors, always, always, every melon flavor I've ever had since the beginning of time, tastes like a plastic Halloween mask. If you grab a Halloween mask off of the shelf at your local Ralph's, and you smell it, that's what melon flavors taste like to me, and I can't untaste it. So I was so freaking skeptical of this Cloud Kicker juice that's a melon flavor, but when I tasted it, all I got was delicious, delicious melon flavor, no plastic Halloween mask. I don't know how they did it. I don't know who's doing their juice, but they did a good, uh, good job. So shout out, yes, to Cloud Kicker Society for making a non-Halloween mask smelling, tasting melon juice. It actually pairs very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So before we get to the giveaway, we're what, 45 minutes into this vlog right now? 
it is time for retro vaping. not a chance that this is gonna work I just know it I just know it god that contact on top is so dirty so what I have for you today let me grab a battery this is the battery I'm gonna be using look at that little 14500 battery little 14500 e-fest 3.7 volt battery I'm gonna be using this so this was one of uh this was one of the early mods that I ever got. This is the Pure Smoker Protégé, and I bought one for myself, and I bought one for my girlfriend at the time, my XXXXXX girlfriend, I bought one for her at the time, and we loved them. I loved them, I gave it to her as a Christmas gift. Pure Smoker Protégé. This was a mech mod, it had a full mech button. They didn't originally, they originally had tactile switches that were wired. Then they went to a full mechanical button. If you can see that, full mechanical button right there. And I had you had the option of getting 510 or 901 or 801 threads. Shit, is that 801? Oh, if that's 801, I'm gonna be very, very upset because I have an atomizer and a battery all ready to go. So I'm gonna get out this brand spanking new 901 atomizer. Okay, good. It's an 80. It's a 901. It is a 901. So this whole switch comes out of here for cleaning. It pops out. It's uh, it's Delrin with the contacts in the middle. This came out in when did this come out? 2000. Got to be 2010. Got to be 2010. I'm thinking it was 2010. I'll link uh, in the description to my original video for the Pure Smoker Protege. And uh, I think it came out in 2010. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to hook this low resistance atomizer on here. I don't know if it's going to fire. Uh, I do know that I need some juice. What should I drip on here? Something... Uh, Something new, something fancy, something, all right, how about pale whale? Let's drip some pale whale on here. I hate these bottles, by the way. I'm sorry if you're a pale whale fan, I fucking hate these bottles. Two, three, four, five, six. Let's get that juiced up. I get it, it's fun. It's a big wooden thing on top of your bottle. Terrible, terrible idea. Oh no, this is not gonna vape. Whoa, fucking clouds, did you see that shit? Mm. I can't, I can't, it's, I'm sure the contacts in the switch. Look at that, it is vaping. Um, I can't believe this is working. So this was the Pure Smoker Protege. I believe I bought one of these for eighty nine dollars. Um, of course, you had to supply your own fourteen five hundred batteries, and it came with five ten nine oh one or eight oh one tips. I originally bought mine with five ten tips, but uh, I also went ahead and got the nine oh ones because I like dripping with a nine oh one more. Um, this was the shit, man. This was this was awesome. The the protege came out and everyone was like, "Look how small it is, and it works really good." Now these contacts are dirty. I know these contacts are dirty in here. Now we would never, in a million bagillion years, consider using these fourteen five hundred batteries. They are just janky, horrible batteries. But Back in 2010, people wanted something that wasn't a stick battery, but people didn't want big, giant mods. I remember when uh, 
one of the first mods, the screwdriver came out, people thought it was too big. When the when the original uh, Prodigy came out, people thought it was too big. I know my buddy Flitz got an original Prodigy. I did not. I'm trying to listen to see it here at fire. Dude, cloud comp for days with this thing. I want to take this to a vape meet. I wish it worked better. Anyway, I can't believe it's working. Uh, I'm impressed. After all these years, uh, it's still it's still functioning for the most part. Um, maybe I'll take it apart. Maybe I'll clean it. Maybe I'll try to get it working a little bit better. But yeah, look at this dinky little mod. This was a mod custom fabricated uh, stainless steel aluminum 901 connection it, it was awesome and I remember I have very fond memories in fact I remember the day I got my first protege um, I had a show that night with my old band the swamp donkey uh, up in Reno and I had a fully charged battery and I took it with me and I vaped it the whole time in fact my buddy rich who was the guitar player in both the swamp donkey and glacier he bought a protege and he would rock it like in his pocket at shows and we would just hmm, have little baby toots on stage can't believe it can't believe it still works but there you go that's what it is that's what we had back in the day to use so 40 minutes and uh it's an hour ish right now um i don't have time for viewer mail uh, I just don't. We'll do the viewer mail next week. Um, additionally, the music thing is really biting me in the ass. Uh, I uploaded the last vlog, and before it was even published, uh, YouTube caught it <laughs> for having music in it. Uh, and it was it was the damn Marmosets, that band Marmosets. It evidently is popular enough to warrant flagging a video, so my video got flagged, and... Uh, they gave me a warning. YouTube let me off with a warning, and uh, it's just—it's hard to include music because I could just easily sit here and say, uh, "Let me open my Spotify and go, yeah, check out Killer Be Killed. They're really good." I could just sit here and list off bands. I could say, uh, "Yeah, check out uh, Enslaved. Check out Ghost Brigade. Check out Ocean Wake. Check out, check out Fear Before the March of Flames." I could sit here and list bands, but that's not fun. I want to listen to bands. I want to experience bands with people. Um, this, oh, no, I can't play that because YouTube's going to flag it. Band called Implode. They're great and they're on Spotify. So I'm going to have to figure out what I want to do with my music segment. I really do like talking about music. I love music. I like seeing live music and uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to do it without... Uh, without uh, YouTube getting pissed off at me. So let's do this giveaway. So here's how we're gonna do this giveaway. I got a box. Look at this box right here. See this box? See how much stuff can fit? See how much stuff can fit inside this box? So here's how we're gonna enter this contest. Uh, this is open to everyone, assuming you are in the United States. Uh, we could probably work around it if you're not. Uh, but you obviously guess you have to be 18 and you're going to have to prove that you're 18 years old if you're the winner. What I want you to do, and this is for advocacy, this is all done in the name of advocacy. Um, what I want you to do is email me, contest at grimgreen.com. Um, you can tell your Instagram friends, your Facebook friends, your YouTube friends, your Twitter friends, tell whoever you want. Um, email me, contest at grimgreen.com. You'll get an auto reply back to make sure that, you know, so you know that you entered. Contest at grimgreen.com. What I want you to do is email me a picture of yourself vaping. Now, I don't want cloud pictures. I want a picture of you with a device in your mouth vaping similar to this. This is how I want it to look. That's what I want. Or maybe even like this. Maybe a little bit of vapor, not clouds. I don't want clouds, bro. I don't need clouds, bro. I just need this. And I want you to look not serious, have fun, pick a cool location, pick your office, pick your kitchen, pick outside, pick the beach, pick somewhere. That's what I want. 
allow me to demonstrate with a different device and a different atomizer. Or even just holding it, like, but look grown up. Uh, and then in the, in, the, in the subject of the email, I want you to, uh, I want you to say your name. Doesn't have to be your full name, just your first name works. Or if you want to conclude your last name, you can do that. Um, your age, the state you live in, how long you've been vaping, how long you smoked and how often, and then your favorite types of flavors. And so what this is gonna do is once a week on Instagram, I'm gonna be posting your picture of you. Uh, there, I'm gonna randomly choose one winner, but I'm gonna use all of these pictures. And there's a hashtag going around called Quit and Tell. And they're these great pictures. And let me try to find one of them. Uh, I saved one of them in my downloads folder. Um, there's these great pictures called Quit and Tell. Oh no, I didn't save it. Anyway, there's these great pictures out there uh, using the hashtag quit and tell. That's basically to kind of raise awareness for what vaping is, putting a face on vaping. Right now, a lot of people uh, see vaping as like this faceless, cloudy, sort of douchebaggy uh, industry. Like we're just here to hook your kids onto nicotine and we're being evil and stuff like that. This is this is putting a human face onto vaping. Hashtag quit and tell. So it doesn't have to be a long email. I don't need your life story. I don't need every device you've ever used. Whoops, my box fell. I just need your name, your age, the state you live in, how long you've been vaping, how long you smoked, and how often. So I smoked for... Uh, shit, how long did I smoke for? 15 years, uh, and I was a pack a week smoker. Um, I've been vaping for six years. My name's Nick. I'm old. I live in California, and I like candy and fruit flavors, or I like bakery and cereal flavors. Um, that's what I need, just this information, because it's going to go in a little picture for Instagram of you, your name, the state you live in, uh, how your little story, you were a pack a day smoker for 27 years and thanks to candy and fruit flavors, you've been vaping and tobacco free for six years. And then there's some, there's some hashtags of CASA, not blowing smoke, the truth about vaping, vaping saved my life, quit and tell. This is going to be a thing. Once a week, I'm going to pick a person to go on Instagram. Out of everybody I get, I'm going to pick one winner who's going to get this sweet fucking giveaway, but everybody else... Your secondary prize is knowing that you're helping vaping advocacy by being featured on uh, a post by me on Instagram of telling your vaping story to help put a face on vaping. So what's going in the prize box? Everyone wants to know what's going in the prize box. This is a big box and you can fit a lot in there. And I have a stack. Oh, I've got a stack. Of, this, is a, this is the best giveaway in the history of America. First things first is a mech mod. So this is uh, a new wolf photo. Wotofo, Phantom Mech Mod. Go in there. Uh, next, Smoke Tech VTC Pro Sub Ohm Tank. These aren't temperature sensing coils, these are canthal coils. That's going in there. Next up is another tank. One of my faves. This is the Star Tank. Comes with two coil heads. I have a review on this coming up. Uh, oh, I already did it. Last week I did the review for the Star Tank. Check it out. Star Tank is going in there. Uh, this is a big one. Inokin iTaste MVP version 3 black. iTaste MVP version 3 black. Next up, how about another tank? How about a Limo version 2? Yeah, that's going in the box. And lastly, how about an Atomizer? How about an, a Mutation X version 3? Yeah, that's going in the box as well. How about some juice? You want some juice? How about the... How about the world-renowned, <laughs> infamous donut pounder, Epicloud, six milligram? Yeah, that's going in the box. How about some Grim Cult? You want a bottle of caramel carps in six milligram? Yeah, that's going in the box. How about some Lane Cove? Ruby Roo was nice enough to send over some Lane Cove. This is my favorite of her juices. Lane Cove Vapor, Mai, six milligram. That's going in the box. Do you see all this? Do you see all this goodness? Two tanks, a rebuildable atomizer, a mech mod, an eye taste MVP, and three bottles of juice. That's 90 mils of juice right there. One, one lucky winner is getting all of this 
shipped to them. Email me, contest at grimgreen.com. I want a picture of you vaping. I want your name, your age, the state you live in, how long you've been vaping, how long you smoked and how often, and your favorite types of flavors. Everybody who enters will have a chance to get featured on my Instagram, but one lucky winner is getting this box of vaping amazingness goodness. So that's what I got. Oh no, you know what? There's another. How about uh, how about a Freak Show Mini in green? Yeah, Freak Show Mini in green. That's going in the box too. Two rebuildable atomizers, three tanks, a mech mod, an I Taste MVP, and 90 mils of juice. Are you kidding me? What we're going to do is uh, we're going to make this go on for exactly one week. Uh, one week from today, um, I'm going to pick a winner. In fact, I'll pick it live on the vlog. Um, next vlog, I will announce the winner. You have one week. So today, today is Thursday, May 21st. You have until Thursday, May 28th to email me contest at grimgreen.com with the information and picture that I require to uh, to just blow up Instagram. We're going to put a face on vaping. We're going to blow up this quit and tell hashtag. Uh, social media is a very powerful thing and we're going to use it to our advantage. So that's what I got. This vlog has run far too long. Thanks for sticking around and watching the whole thing. Thank you again to Tactical Warmouse uh, for the official, unofficial, official beer. As always, I do have a lot of very cool stuff coming up. A lot of, you know, mech mods, regulated mods, atomizers, toppers, blah, 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 blah. All that fun stuff. Um, of course, there's going to be many, many more vlogs. We're going to have a lot more beer. Um, what I want to do in a future vlog is take that growler up to the Stone Brewery and uh, get it filled up with something. So hopefully I can film that. Um, I think that would be really cool. Maybe we can talk to someone at Stone to talk about beer before I get my growler filled up from Cheeksy Vapes. Shout out to Cheeksy Vapes. And uh, yeah, there's just a lot of cool... Uh, a lot of cool stuff coming up. Hope to uh, meet you, hang out with you all someday at a vape meet. Again, I'm going to be at VaporCon West July in Reno, Nevada. I'm going to be at VCCPA in Pittsburgh in June. Um, right now, I'm focusing on VaporCon West, getting everything all set up. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of paperwork and a lot of red tape, and I hate I hate organizing vape meets, but it's always fun. I'm going to wrap this up. Crucial links are in the description. Timestamps are in the description. Everything's down there that you need. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. What am I going to grab? Got to be the my box. Twisted Messes RDA. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping.